Hi everyone. I'm going to include a short series here on how to use an abacus, especially for students who are blind or visually impaired. I encourage you, if you come up with particular operations or activities in a math class that you'd like to see how to use an abacus to support, that you ask those questions down in the comments preferably earlier in the semester rather than later if you're seeing this in real time. So today I'm just going to talk briefly about the parts of an abacus as folks who are blind and visually impaired use them. This abacus has four ones beads and one five bead on every rod and the rods are the vertical bars or the vertical pieces of metal here that go up and down on each part and carry the beads. So I have rods for every place value. I have the ones rod, the tens rod, the hundreds rod. And then on my bar, which is the cross piece in the middle that sets which beads are active and which are not, that um, there's like a little hash mark in between the rods where a comma would normally go in print or braille. Um, so that comma between the thousands and the hundreds that comma between the ten thousand or the millions and the hundred thousands, and the comma between the billions and the hundred millions, if we're talking American numbers here, uh, and that's available in either place. So that helps you keep your orientation with your fingers and not be confused about how many rods over you've gone. So I've got my rods running up and down; they carry the beads. I've got my bar running across the middle. Uh, my beads are active when they're touching and they're inactive when they're away from. And then there's some felt down behind. It might be red, it might be green, depending on which Cranmer abacus you have. But that felt touching the back of the beads from underneath is what makes it a Cranmer abacus. And that makes the beads have some resistance when you push them. It's not a ton, but it's enough that braille reading fingers can then go over the beads to count how many there are or to read the number without displacing the beads and changing the number. Whereas if you had an abacus that was just open on the back, uh, you'd be at risk of moving a bead when you touched a bead. That's certainly handy and quick if you're visually reading the numbers for the beads to be able to move that easily. Um, but beads that can move really easily can be a problem for a braille reader, so that's why we use these felt-backed ones. You can also get couplers that join on the edge and attach a second Cranmer abacus if you need more rods for the type of problem you're working. Or of course you could just put two abaci, abacuses abaci, side by side. The correct term is abacuses, but it's so much more fun to think of it as abaci. All right, so how do these beads work and why does every column only have five and not 10? The beads on the bottom are my ones, one value beads. Each bead here is worth one of whatever that place value is. So in my ones column, one, two, three, four, and I set them active by moving them toward the bar. Then I have a five bead on top. Whenever I bring that down counting, I'm going to keep moving and clear the four I already had because otherwise my number would say nine. So I'm going to clear that and then I have five. That's what five looks like on this abacus. Then I could keep going six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is the most I can have in any column because nine is the most you can have in any column when you're writing. And then if I need to go bigger, 10 puts one up in the tens column and clears the ones column. I could count on from there so you see more examples of both what the numbers look like on the abacus and the hand movements I use to achieve them. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So then I've got 30 on my abacus. I could set any number. I could set 978 by going over to my hundreds and doing 900. 70 is 7 in the tens column and 8 is 8 in the ones column. Because everything happens in its hundreds column, its tens column, its ones column, or its billions column, if you want to have, or this is trillion over here, so 7 trillion, uh, 978, you can do that. Uh, everything happens in columns. This really ingrains a good sensibility about early numeracy and place value. 
for anyone. Uh, and it serves as really handy scratch paper for a child who's blind or an adult who's blind. A common way I have used it as an adult, since another blind adult showed me this trick and why he had an abacus on his desk, is for taking a phone number. And then you have to decide when you take a phone number, do you like to put spaces for the hyphens or the dashes or the parentheses or the periods? Or do you like just to put all 10 digits straight together? It's important to always do it the same way because otherwise on an abacus, you wouldn't know later reading it back if something were a zero or uh, an act like a hyphen. So I like to leave a gap for the hyphens because that's how I think of, of phone numbers as being written. So I'm gonna give you a phone number. I'm gonna say 555 and then I'll leave a space. Do 957. Then I'll do 6013. And there's a made up TV phone number 555-957-6013. Uh, and of course, as I read that along tactily, I'm gonna read along the bar. And by touching above and below the bar, I can see where there are numbers. So I can see I've got 555 and then a blank. And then I've got a number here that is at least six, but I don't know how many because my finger touching really only runs into the bead right above and the bead right below. So then I can read down and find out that that's a nine, five, seven, six, zero, one, three. Uh, and if I keep my finger running along in a place where it could hit the top bead and it would hit the bottom bead, then I know I'll always catch those fives at the top. Sometimes I see kids who are just learning to use the abacus attend only to the bottom and maybe they would think that this was a four instead of a nine or that this was a two instead of a seven. Um, so running along on the bar where I can run into those five beads makes sure that I don't cut five value off of any digit that I'm reading. I always clear my abacus by setting it all the way back to zero before starting any sort of work or counting or tallying um, so that I don't end up with extra, extra numbers in where I didn't expect them to be or where I didn't put them. So there's the basic orientation to your abacus and how to use it to count and set numbers. When kids first start out, of course, they'll be counting all of their numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Later, uh, kids should start to recognize that this is what eight looks like on the abacus. And so when you say set it to eight, they should be able to just set it directly to eight because they know this is what eight looks like. Just like eight on the Braille writer looks like numeric indicators, two, three, five, six. They would expect it to look like an eight here. Um, or a print reader would expect an eight to look like the little snowman thing. So getting to a point of recognizing numbers allows you to quickly set numbers and do things like eight, seven, six, and set your numbers directly rather than counting up to each one. But of course, kids start by counting because that's how they get familiar with it. Uh, I'll do some more episodes later on how to add and subtract or multiply and divide or do factors using some of the different strategies in math but leave a comment if there's something in specific you would like to see how to do on your Cranmer Abacus. Happy brailing!